you, you can't just um, give a load of food to someone and just be like, well, I've given you food, you should just be thankful. Actually, yeah. the support needs to be appropriate and it needs to fix the problem. If you're not understanding what the problem is in the first place, you provide a solution which is of no use to anyone. We were running just before the pandemic began, cooking and delivering meals to people who were shielding. But it hasn't stopped. The demand is still very much there. It hasn't disappeared. And as we all know, it's uh, on the rise. From a positive side of things, I think the pandemic really highlighted those issues around you know, food poverty. More people are coming together, more charities are working together. There's more organisations doing stuff. We've attracted more corporate partners. The original kind of response to the pandemic was, you know, you, you scale up what you're doing around food provision around the city. Um, but the reality was that food provision wasn't fit for purpose for everyone that needed the help. What, what is appropriate food for refugees and asylum seekers? What, what is the nutritional content that the people that are homeless needing? One of the questions that has been asked actually is the stigma. Someone has said, I know people can be nervous about going to a food bank for the first time. What would you suggest? We have people come for different reasons. We have some people that come because it's not because they can't afford to buy food. It's because they're really, really lonely and they want someone to talk to. But if you can create something that's centered around communities that creates um, really positive spaces for people to come and, and they, they mix with other people, they, they learn from each other. We often have people come and volunteer instead um, because they know that they'll get a meal instead um, mm. and that helps them cross the, the barriers. You know, we run a project called The Children's Kitchen and it's all about teaching children, not solely about cooking food, it's more about a positive experience with food. And create a positive um, interaction with, with, with and, and then and then we have to think about how we have to tailor approaches to, um, to to adult learning. Having those community spaces where people can come and, like you said, yes, the food is a service, but they can also interact, and that is tackling issues like social isolation and loneliness. All of these factors are sort of sewn together in a web, and by what we, I think all of our organisations are doing is is starting with one, but it actually is having an effect on lots of other things as well. Thank you.